In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to design a political flyer like this. And this is coming up. Hello everybody and welcome to the channel once again. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new here, please hit on the subscribe button if you're old here. Thank you so much for showing up. Before I dive into the video, please note that this particular video is in no way affiliated to any political party. I'm just using the picture of a Ghanaian popular actor who has entered into politics to make this. It has no political affiliation and the campaign team of John Dumele doesn't even know this exists. So as always, if you want to download the resources and follow suit, it will be right in the description so you can download it. And let's get into Photoshop. So this particular flyer is going to be of the form that you can actually download and print. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to create a new document. To do that, you can press Ctrl N or you go to File and then New and then you can create a new document. Once you have this pop up right over here, I'm using A3 paper size A3 to do this particular design. If yours doesn't actually show the A3 here, you can go to the presets. If you're using CC, that's a different approach. So preset, international paper, and then you can choose A3 from here. Now you go ahead and then you click OK. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a very simple solid color. I added a solid color because the image that I'm going to use, he's already in white. So if you leave the background white, it is going to mess up. So I'm going to set this particular color here. This is the color code. And then you go ahead and then you click OK. Next off, I'll head over to my resources. I grab this particular NDC logo style from the internet. So I'm going to drag and drop it inside of Photoshop on a separate document. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my crop tool that is C for the shortcut. And then I'm going to crop this one out to this side. So probably here. And then I'm going to double click on that. Once it is done, I'm going to send it over to the document that we are working on and I'm going to position it on top here. So I'll press Ctrl T to transform it out like this and I'll transform it very nicely like that. I'm just going to push it up here. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select my layer mask or add a layer mask to the layer. I'm going to pick my brush to make sure that your foreground color is black and then you can increase your brush size and then you brush it off something like that so that you get the faded style something like that you see how it goes like so we can get the faded style over there now once you're done with this and you feel like it's too big you just use the arrow keys and then you can push it up a little bit over here like that I'm just doing this from the very bottom so let's go in and bring in our image now I got two images from the Instagram handle of John Dumelo like I said he has no idea whatsoever that even this video exists so it is strictly for educational purpose so I'm going to drag and drop this one inside of the documents that we're working on and then you can take your time to position it, like transform it to make it look very nice. So something like that and then you can place it somewhere around this area. If you feel so small, you press Ctrl T to transform it up. I hope you get the point. Now once you're done, you're just going to click on this one to take or just press enter on your keyboard and then you're good to go. Next off, you're going to make some nice ellipse over the body. That is going to be the basically the design on this one. So we're going to pick the ellipse tool that is the circle tool over here. We're going to hold shift and then it creates a perfect circle or a perfect ellipse whatsoever that you want to call it. Now make sure that you press Ctrl T to transform this one to make it big enough because you want it at least covered across the width of the documents that you're working on. So you can stretch it out some more like that. And then once you're done with that, you don't double click or you don't check the tick over here. You just right click and then you select the warp from the pop-up that will show up. So you can play around with these edges for any one of them that you drag. It is going to give you like a different contour style. Is it contour or whatsoever? So you can play around with this ones like that. So you can stretch forth this one. I don't know if I'm going to get exactly 
what I have in the thumbnail, but I think if you play around with it, you're going to get something that interests you a lot. So I can get something like that. At least something like this looks good. We just want a curved something, something. Yeah. Now we can just go ahead and then we double click or you can check the tick over here. And this is the style that we have. But then we're going to change this particular color. It is still a shape. Remember, it is still a shape. We've not rasterized it or whatsoever. So we're going to double click on this one and then we're going to pick a color from the flag over there. So you pick the green color from here, which the green looks very pale. So what I'm going to do is let me select this second color here and let me go and bring in the logo so that I can get the actual colors from the logos. So I'm going to bring in the logo here. Let me position it here. For whatever reason, we're just going to bring it later on. So if it's clumsy now, I think it makes perfect sense. What do you think? So from here, we can go back to the ellipse and then we're going to double click on this layer thumbnail or the, yeah, the layer thumbnail. And then you can pick the color right from their logo. So we're just going to use the original colors and then once you select the color, I think now you can see exactly what we did. If you still want to try out with some of the shapes, you can still press Ctrl T, right click, select the warp here, and then you can still play around with it. So let me bring this one down a little bit like that. And something like this should be okay. So right there, and then I double click. Now we're just going to do the same thing for this, the rest of the colors, you know, the colors are white, red, and black. So I'm going to duplicate this one right over here, double click on it, change the color to red, and then I can, I think, let me use the pure red, and then I can click OK from here. I'm just going to use my arrow keys to bring this one down a little bit like that. So you see, it creates the shape for us. And then we duplicate the same thing, double click on the layer thumbnail and we're going to choose the color white. And then you click OK, use your arrow keys and then you bring this one down. And then it should create this beautiful kind of shape or whatever you call it for you. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create another shape underneath of these ones. So I'm going to select the rectangle to create a shape over here. Make sure you don't hold the shift as it is going to join or combine with the ellipse that you created. So you're going to create a shape over here, double click on it and you're going to pick the green color. You're going to place something right there in a very few minutes. Now next off, we're going to create another rectangle. So we're creating a lot of rectangles over here. So let's pick this one and create the rectangle around here. So something like that. Double click on it and then you can choose the color red and then you click OK. And now you can go ahead and press Ctrl A and then you make sure that it is centered horizontally. Now I feel like this particular ellipse is not what I'm actually looking for. Let me try if I can get something much nicer. So I'm going to press Ctrl T again, sorry for that. And I'm going to try to twerk this one around a little bit. So let's say something like this. I just want this one raised up a little bit and this one comes here like that. Okay. So I think this looks quite similar to the one in the thumbnail. What do you think? Because I don't want you guys to feel like you clicked on something that is not in the video. So we can repeat the same process. And so we are even now. So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to push your rectangle on top here. You can press Ctrl T to transform it out a little bit. And I have some test here. So I'm going to select his name. I'm going to select my test tool. And on top here, I don't want to write in the rectangle. So I'm going to paste the John Dumelo here. The font that I'm going to use is called Hevet Car Inserat. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to download that. I'm going to select the name and I'll change the color to white. So I'll press Ctrl T and transform it again like that and you should have something like this. So John Dumelo right over there. You can even press Ctrl A to make sure that it is centered. Yeah. 
so we go ahead and then we're going to pick our rectangle tool over here but before then you can actually try and then group all of these ones or this particular theory you can group them and call it the circles or something like that so something like circle over here and then you go on top of the john dumelo you're going to pick your rectangle to draw a very strict rectangle very small like that and then you can change the color back to green so we're going to do something very real quick over here you can zoom in the more something like that to make sure that you have a very clear view and then you can close the rectangle so that it becomes very small now let's zoom back in and then you're going to position this one around here like that so we go for the ellipse tool over here which if you try to create an ellipse right away it is going to merge with the rectangle so what we're going to do is i'm going to add a new layer to it before i go for the ellipse tool by then i can create a perfect circle so a perfect circle over here or a perfect ellipse however you want to call it and then i'm going to change that color also we'll double click on the layer thumbnail and then you change the color to green you press ctrl a and then you make sure that you align it horizontally now you can press ctrl d zoom in and then you can press ctrl t to transform it out over here like that from there you can use the arrow keys to make sure that it is in the middle of the rectangle and we can go ahead and add a test to it so you don't write straight into the circle so you're going to write behind it and then you paste it or you use your move tool to move it into the circle so i'm going to type as so as and i'm going to move it over here next off you can duplicate this particular test by pressing ctrl j and then you drag it over here I already have the test here so i'm just going to select that so john dumelo as member of parliament and then you're going to copy that one select your test and then you're going to paste it over here now you can select it all again and then you use the color black over here i'm going to use the font poppins right over there and i'm going to make sure that it is bold so i can press ctrl t open this one up or perhaps transform it and then i can bring it over here the spacing here is too much so i'm going to select it or open my toggle character and then i can close the canning to about minus 40 so that the space wouldn't be that much so i can bring it over here press ctrl t and transform it the more something like that so next off i'm going to duplicate that same test bring it to the very bottom I go into my test and I have Ayawaso West Wogun. That is where he's actually contesting for the member of parliament. So I'm going to select it all and I'm going to paste it over here. This time around, we're going to decrease the font to make it a bit smaller and we're going to change the color also to green. So you click OK and then you can push this one up here. Select the two and you can push this down. So from there you can realize that you can select the ellipse the ass and then the rectangle and you can push that one to down a little bit and from there we can actually select our first rectangle and push that one to up like that from there we can also duplicate the same test and then drag it over here select it all change the color to white and it should be on top of this one where is it going to right over there so we can go back to our test and then select the last one for this font i'm going to use a font called acrobat so i'm going to select this all and choose acrobat from here and you can close the leading right over there like that so when you're done you just take over here and i think this looks good you can push this up a little bit like that let me zoom in the more and see i think the leading seems way awkward so i'm just going to open it up like that or better still you can even push this rectangle up something like that and then you push the motor also up a little bit and then you should be good to go now the last thing that we're going to 
add is when you go to the resources we have this particular vote for over here which is supposed to come up it can be on top here or it can be on the same side with the logo so you're just going to bring this one here and then you're going to drag and drop it inside of photoshop now you can position it at the extreme left so that it can read vote john dumelo as member of parliament i also west wagon and the rest follows like that you can use the ruler here to make sure that both the logo and then the vote for are on the same line which this one is not but you can take your time to actually do the same thing the last thing that we want to do is we want to duplicate the logo the actual logo and then we're going to use it as a watermark this particular watermark request has been made several times so if you are one of them who wants to learn how to make the watermark it is pretty much simple let's get into it so what you're going to do is you're going to select the logo the ndc logo and then you're going to duplicate it. so you press ctrl j to duplicate it now you're going to press ctrl a to make sure that you center it both horizontally and vertically and then you can press ctrl t to transform it to be a little bit bigger like that now you realize that it is on top of the image so we're going to drag it to the very bottom on top of the solid color that we created so that it will write behind it now all that you need to do is you decrease the opacity to about 10 percent so you can set this to about 10 percent and then voila it creates a watermark for you you can increase the opacity by pressing the numeric keys the one two three and it should give you 30 40 50 upwards like that but i think 10 looks good for this particular design and yes that's pretty much it that's how you go about creating a very simple this is a very basic election flyer that you can create for let's say your member of parliament or your party aspirant okay if you gained any value from this one it would be great to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to leave your comments feedbacks and critiques all in the comment section as it helps a lot in growing the channel thank you so much for sticking around to watch this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one it's innocent here and bye